Hello and welcome to part 9a of this video series on Arduino and Python serial communication using Pi Serial. I've seen a few comments requesting adding a timestamp to the Arduino code. So that's what we're going to do in part 9a. In part 9b, we'll look at the Python code that supports it. There are two main things we need to add. One is a new character input and two is the timestamp itself. Here's a quick overview of the code. We're going to keep the previously developed functionality. When we send the Arduino the character G, we return a single data point. We're going to keep that if statement, and we're going to add a new one. If the user sends the Arduino a C, we're going to not only print the data point, but a timestamp as well. Here's a closer look at this new functionality. We're going to use the millis function. The millis function returns a number of milliseconds. When we turn on the Arduino, it starts counting the number of milliseconds that it's been turned on in running the program. Millis returns how many milliseconds it's been since the start of the program. The amount of time we're measuring is going to be how long the user had requested a data point, specifically how long has it been since the user sent the character C to request the timestamp data? The serial print functions here simply format the data. The output format of the data is a data point, a dash, and then the timestamp. Now let's take a look how we're creating this timestamp when the user inputs the character C. In this demonstration, we're going to step through each line of code and see what the values are for the previous time and the current time. Ultimately, we're subtracting the current time from the previous time. We first wait for the user to input the C character. Previous time and current time are both zero upon the first passage of this if statement. That's because they're initialized to zero. We then assign previous time to current time. What this does is saves the previous point to which we collected. The second iteration of this if statement makes it more clear of why we have to do this. The next line of code we call the millis function and we assign it to current time. This is where we get the current time update. Notice how current time at the bottom of the screen got updated to 500. This is assuming that the user press C 500 milliseconds from the beginning of the program. Then we collect the data point reading from our analog pin on the Arduino. The last functionality in this if statement is to print the specific output format. Data point dash current time minus previous time. To get the amount of time which has passed since we last collected a data point, we simply subtract the current data point from the previous. Here it's 500 milliseconds minus zero. We will assume that one second has passed and then the user presses C again. Notice that current time is 500 milliseconds and previous time is zero. This is why we need to do this saving assignment here. Previous time equals current time. Now previous time equals 500. And at this point, current time and previous time are equal. We need to call the millis function again to get the latest point. What time are we at relative to the beginning of the program? Because one second has passed, current time is now 1500 seconds. Then we go through the sequence again of printing it out. We subtract current time from previous time and we will get 1000 milliseconds or one second. To summarize, we need to make sure we save a data point, collect a new point, and then subtract the new point from the old point, giving us the time difference. How long has it been since we collected a data point using the C input character? This is how we're generating our Arduino timestamp. One very important piece of information is that we need to declare current time and previous time as unsigned longs. This is a data type that is 32 bits of information and only represents positive numbers. So we can represent 0, 
to about 4.29 billion. The MILS function supports about 50 days of data logging. So for a rule of thumb, assume that you can log about 50 days of data between collecting two points. Here's a last look at the code that we added in to support this Arduino timestamp. Thank you very much for watching this video. We focused in 9a on the Arduino side. 9b will be on Pythons, so how do we interpret our custom data format that we're printing? Check out the link in the description for the GitHub link to this code. Have a great day and stay tuned for more content.